Wednesday, February 21st, 2024, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to be talking about inflationary waves. Yes, uh, and I'd like to thank Rafi Farber of the Endgame Investor for bringing this up. I had heard of inflationary waves, that there was one in the 70s, and that we're going into one now. That's Uh, the theory here, and it's just my opinion. Uh, but Rafi found another uh, series of inflationary waves, and we're going to uh, look at that today. Uh, before I do, I I'd like to make a couple of announcements. The first one is, uh, I think, uh, quite exciting, <laughs> and some of you are going to like this. Uh, but one thing you need to uh, be uh, to participate in this is a subscriber. So recently, uh, one of you by the name of Blue Water Stacks mentioned that he wanted to help organize a Road to 100,000 giveaway. And I've never done a giveaway here on the channel. So this is not the giveaway uh, video. I need to work out how to uh, have a comic picker video. I haven't worked it out yet, but um, Blue Water Stacks sent uh, a few gifts for, for the giveaway. Uh, he sent it to Gold Investments, of course. I don't give my uh, home address. And uh, I was able to pick it up yesterday. And uh, I think it's going to be exciting. So the comic picker is going to pick one one of you, of course. And uh, Blue Water Stacks generally generously sent two one uh, dollar gold backs, which have one two thousandth of an ounce in gold. The gold backs, and he sent also uh, one ounce uh, Johnson Matthey silver bar. Those will be given away, and there will be one winner, of course. And I've decided to add uh, some goodies for you guys, too. Um, I'm going to add a Silver Eagle, one ounce, and, drum roll, <laughs> I'm going to add a, a 120th of, a, of an ounce, a gold maple leaf as well. So I think that's going to be really exciting. Uh, I guess the, the point of this giveaway is to try to uh, grow the channel to get to 100,000. And it's a bit of fun. It's uh, giving back uh, a little bit to, to you guys. And the other thing <laughs> I decided to add, and we're going to talk about this now, is a uh, silver coin balance. So you're going to get this too. And I've spoken already, uh, I think it was last year, the gold coin balance. But now, uh, my uh, friend in California who, who sells these, he's got a, a silver coin scale or balance. And uh, I remember when I started buying gold and silver, I'd never uh, <laughs> touched a gold uh, or silver coin or bar. And I, I didn't know what to expect or, you know, whether it was real or not. And that's why I went to the most, you know, try to get the most reputable dealer that had been in business for the longest time. But it's always good to have something like like this to test it. And uh, I'm just going to show you how it's done. I've taken some photos here of uh, my uh, tests. Uh, I, I tested uh, a kangaroo, I tested a Britannia, uh, I tested uh, a maple leaf, I, I tested a Krugerrand, and I tested that s silver eagle that I'm going to be sending. And it, it's just for bullion silver coins. So as you can see here, you, you place the balance on a surface, and you place the coin here, And it's supposed, you know, and it drags the the balance down, and it touches the surface and stays there. So that doesn't mean to say that it's uh, real, you know, that it's not uh, counterfeit silver coin. But it's one of the ways to do it. I guess you can use a magnet as well or a pinger. So yeah, check out the links below for the 
silver coin balance and he's still got some gold coin balances if you're interested. So now back to the uh, inflationary waves. Many of you uh, probably know that I grew up in Brazil and uh, I was lucky enough to, to live right by the sea. It wasn't out in the ocean, it was within uh, the bay, bay of uh, Rio de Janeiro or Guanabara Bay, and it was a little bay within the bay. And I used to go swimming a lot, and uh, we also used to go to the beach uh, out of the bay uh, on the Atlantic Ocean. And I enjoyed, uh, of course, going to the beach as a boy. And I used to body surf a lot. And uh, yeah, and you go, go in the water, I'd stay there hours. And sometimes there would be no waves <laughs> and you'd have to wait. And then you get like two or three or four in a sequence. Uh, I don't remember ever just, uh, you know, there might might have been a rare occasion where you got one wave. So I'm trying to say here, in, in nature, uh, things work in sequences and cycles. And, and the same thing goes for human action because... Uh, inflation is a consequence or rising prices is a consequence of human action. Uh, the human action, of course, is governments and central banks creating currency out of thin air, putting it into circulation. Rising prices is uh, people realizing that there's too much currency and they bid uh, for goods and the price of those goods go up. CPI is not inflation, and even though they tell us that it is, uh, it's the consequence. And the, the reason they do that is that they want to hide the fact they're the, that they're the ones that create the inflation through fiat currency and uh, through printing money, through keeping interest rates artificially low. So just like in nature, uh, Inflation comes in waves, and we're going to look at that. And it's uh, thank Rafi again for finding another another sequence of inflationary waves in, in the last hundred years. And before we do, though, just wanted to look at the the story of King Canute and the tide, and it just goes to show how the central bankers and policymakers are, you know, very. Uh, arrogant and they think they can change things and I think they'll be proven wrong. Uh, the only way they can stop this inflation wave uh, cycle of the 2020s is to basically yeah, institute draconian and author authoritarian uh, policies. If they leave things pretty much free, so to speak, uh, I think we'll get these. So the story of King Canute and the tide is the is an ap apocryphal anecdote illustrating the piety or humility of King Canute the Great, recorded in the 12th century by Henry of Huntingdon. In the story, uh, Canute demonstrates to his flattering courtiers that he has no control over the elements, the incoming tide, explaining that secular power is vain compared to the supreme power of God. The episode is frequently alluded to in contexts where the futility of trying to stop the tide of an inexorable event is pointed out, but usually misrepresenting Canute as believing that he had su supernatural powers when hunting the stories, the stories story in fact relates to the opposite. Yeah, I, I always thought that too. I, I, I thought that King Canute tried to stop the tide, but no, he was trying to teach his courtiers that you couldn't. And uh, yes, of course, you're going to hear J Jeremy Hunt, uh, Janet Yellen, Jay Powell, Andrew Bailey, all saying that they can stop inflation, but they won't be able to. So let's quickly go through these cycles then. Uh uh, let's bring them up. So, and again, I have to thank Rafi for this because I didn't realize that there was uh, an inflation wave cycle during the 1940s, which makes sense, of course, because that was during World War II. So as you can see here, there's the uh, 
inflation cycle, and this is taken from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And like Rafi said in this video, uh, they've tinkered, of course, with the inflation data or CPI. It, it's probably a lot lower now than it should really be, but uh, we want to see the cycles. It doesn't matter what the number is. So World War I started for the U.S., of course, in late 1941. So you can see inflation picked up there. Uh, going into 1942, it seems, seems like it was already picking up prior to the breakout. But it topped uh, around 12% or so. And then it came down towards the end of the war. And then it looks like they put price controls there, like Rafi said in his video. It, it was pretty flat. But then when people came back from war, from the war and the private, you know, free economy kicked off, so to speak, there's a lot of shortages. A, a lot of the uh, industrial base had been transferred uh, or converted into creating war, war, war materials, right? Not consumer goods. So prices went up again. Uh, there's a lot of... Uh, currency flowing around as well to finance the war and we got up to almost 20 percent and then it came down and uh after that uh there might have been a little bit of uh inflation but it was pretty uh how can i say smooth sailing up until of course the late or mid 60s to the early 80s and back then we had three waves uh in the 40s we had two so as i said at the beach sometimes you used to get two waves sometimes three waves and uh you'd always wait uh you could tell which waves were the biggest so you'd let i would let like the first two waves go by and you dive into the wave <laughs> Uh, which is really fun. I used to look, like doing that. And then you get out of the wave and you then the big wave comes and you, you know, you uh, surf down that wave. A lot of times I used to get uh, turned around and come out of the wave full of sand all over <laughs> in my mouth, in my uh, swimming shorts and, and everything. It was fun, though. Um, so, yeah, in the 60s, uh, 70s and early 80s we had these inflation waves and uh, one of the reasons why in my opinion you can't stop these is that prices are the consequence of inflation or creation of currency and credit and unless you want to really destroy the economy <laughs> um, yeah that currency and credit is going to stay in the system and it is going to uh, reflect itself uh, as rising prices. So we can see here the first wave got, got uh, inflation up to 6% or CPI. Then it drifted down into the uh, early 70s there, probably around 72, 73, down to almost 2%. And then we had the second big wave, pretty big wave. Uh, we got up to 12% in uh, 1975 or thereabouts. And then it we had another uh, wave that came down. And then from 1977 onwards, we had the, sec the third big wave. And we got up to like, uh, wow, above 14%. And then after that, the central banks, of course, were able to tame inflation. They didn't get rid of inflation. We still had 2 3 4%. And even 2% CPI is bad because it debases, it halves the value of the currency over 40 years. Um, so now we come to the present day and we're just starting, in my opinion here, either we're going to have two waves like in the 40s or three. Uh, so we've ended the, the first wave here and it started from March 2020. And we know what happened then. And we got up to 9%. And I would say this was probably more like 15% or 12% because they fudged so much the CPI. They've done it, you know, since the 90s. And you can uh, go to uh, shadowstats.com and John Williams talks uh, about that. So yeah, we had this first wave in 2020. 
to maybe uh, early 2023 or thereabouts. And it's come down now. And uh, yeah, the question here is whether there's just going to be one wave or two or three. I think there will be two, at least two. Uh, of course, we're going to be told no that um, by central bankers and uh, politicians that they've got it under control. But there's another chart I wanted to show you, and I have to thank Tavi Costa, who I've had on the channel. Uh, he's looked at the monetary base, which is a bit different than money supply. Uh, monetary base is just currency in circulation and also uh, currency that banks have with the central bank. And as you can see here, uh, when we had this uh, first wave of inflation and after it came down, the monetary base was coming down as well. And now it's picking back up and and. M2 as well, that's starting to pick up, uh, as you can see here. So, yeah, and that's why I'm not getting rid of uh, my gold and silver, because gold and silver were the best performing commodities assets in the 70s. In the 40s, of course, gold and silver were, well, gold was illegal in the U.S. and in most other countries as well, or gold was money and the price of gold or was fixed to the currencies. Uh, silver was really hard to get, probably, uh, because they needed it for the war. What I'm trying to say, it wasn't traded as much as now. Yeah, but that's why I'm not getting rid of my gold and silver because um, I think the waves, inflationary waves, are just starting. We had the first one. We're going to get a second at least. We might even get a third. And then things are going to get really uh, rough. And you will want to have some protection. Gold and silver are not for trading. They are for insurance. Uh, eventually, yes, you will want to uh, exchange them for some kind of asset. You might even need it for an emergency. So let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's 8.24 a.m. London time. Uh, we've got spot gold at 2,028. It's up $4. High's been 32, low 22. So it looks like we're uh, holding up above 2000 we did break 2000 last week but we closed a week above 2000 and i saw that in shanghai the dollar equivalent price of gold uh yesterday settled at uh 2070 or thereabouts so the last time there's a big premium uh in shanghai eventually the london and new york price catches up but we'll have to wait and see uh Spot silver is up 10 cents at 23.10. High's been 20. The low's been 22.95. To the stock market, and I, I've seen tweets out there that um, about the stock market that a lot of the big uh, holders of the of the stocks that done well, the Magnificent Seven and others, like the billionaires out there, like Jeff Bezos, they've been um, selling a lot of their holdings and, and usually that's not a good sign because the insiders they get out first um, i'm not saying we're going to have a crash but just wanted to let you know about that uh, so the dow right now the dow futures is down 81 nasdaq is down 76 and the s p is back uh, below 5000 it's at 49.66 it's down 11. Uh, Looking at the currencies here, they they haven't done much at all, so I'm not going to go through them. Uh, what about the commodities? Well, they they're down a little bit. The uh, crude oil WTI is down half a percent, seventy six sixty. Brent as well, it's at eighty one forty, down half a percent. Uh, platinum, that's up a buck, trading around nine hundred and six. High grade copper is continuing to creep up. It's up 0.4 of a percent, just below 390. And we're going to finish off with the bond market. The 10 year yield, US 10 year yield, Treasury yield is at 428. So it's holding below that 433. You got to keep an eye on that. Uh, here in the UK, the gilt 
uh, or government bond market. Uh, the two-year yield is at 460. Uh, it's pretty steady. I I'd be concerned if we get back above 5% five, 5%. Right now, it seems to be under control. End of five years, as well as at 413, I, I would look at 425, 450 if we get above those levels. That is not good for the economy. Uh, and uh, yes, with that, <laughs> I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.